There's always been certain memes that, no matter how long ago they lost relevance, managed to stick in the back of people's minds for whatever reason. This usually happens with many early memes, like Numa Numa, or Trollface, or some third example, and even some memes that weren't the biggest or most fondly remembered could get immortalized in this way. One of these forgotten classics that still reappear every so often is a comedy song that got big online in the early 2000s, though most of you probably remember it from this. Ding fries it done, ding fries it done, ding fries it done, ding The legacy of Ding Fries It Done is one that's lasted a surprisingly long time despite the joke's simplicity. It's a meme that's very much of its time, both in terms of its origins and the fact that it's the kind kind of meme whose peak is being referenced in Family Guy. So with the song's strange omnipresence, I thought it would be interesting to look back at where the song came from and why exactly it became as big as it did back in the day. Five years before Family Guy first aired, on December 11th, 1994, the comedy music radio show Dr. Demento was airing the first of their three yearly Christmas broadcasts. A little over halfway through the show, the host plays a song titled Ding Fries Are Done, introduced to be by an artist simply named Billy. I work at Burger King making flavor whoppers. I would pay perhaps. Would you like an apple pie with that? A little later into the show, he plays another Billy song called I Wish You a Merry Christmas. 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 I have a new year. These would be the world's first major exposures to the comedy cassette A Very Spastic Christmas, an album filled with 12 classic Christmas songs sung in that voice people used to sound retarded. Hello, my name is Billy. I work at Burger King. I make Whopper, Double Whopper, Double Whopper with cheese, Ding, Fries are done, but I'm also a singer, and this is my Christmas album. The songs from this tape were played often on the Dr. Demento show, but this seems to be some of the only promotion for this album, with the only other media referencing it being this commercial which was uploaded to YouTube sometime later. For years, you've thrilled as he sang his chart-topping hits. Now it's time to make Billy a part of your family's Christmas tradition, as Sessions presents A Very Spastic Christmas. This tape was also hard to come by, as in order to actually purchase it, you had to mail a check to a P.O. box in California and receive it a few days later through the mail. Man, the internet made things so much more convenient, you know? I can't imagine what it would be like to be back in the day and have to send someone a death threat for saying the n-word through a UPS. There's very little information about the tape's history, and with it being rare and obscure, it's difficult to confirm any information. In fact, the tape was actually partially lost media for a while, since the only clips of it online were small samples of each song from Dr. Demento's music archive, with Ding Fries Are Done being one of the only full versions available. It was only until 2017 when someone finally uploaded the full tape to YouTube that anyone could listen to it in full. But this also shows just how little is available surrounding this album, so even back in the day, people started digging. Someone searching in 2002 found that the P.O. box was owned by a man named Patrick Rohde, who Billy refers to as his manager in a letter allegedly sent to people asking about the tape. Looking Patrick Rohde up now, he is proudly stating his involvement on the tape, albeit only as a co-producer, and he was also the guy who uploaded the commercial to YouTube. He also does have a history in media being a comedy writer as well as a frequent television presenter, but from the way he's talked about it, it's clear he's not the main creative mind behind the album. For a long time, the real identity of Billy was completely lost, and although there were people curious, the main priority for most was to laugh at big funny ableism. Side note for a minute, but the title of the tape is A Very Spastic Christmas. Now over here, spastic just means generally disabled, but in the UK it's actually a specific slur for people with cerebral palsy. Now, Billy's disability isn't directly stated anywhere, but it's been culturally inferred that he has Down syndrome. And with all that information in mind, I just have to ask, how am I supposed to take this seriously? They can't even be ableist correctly. Knowledge of Billy would stay in the niche comedy music scene until 2002, when an internet user going by the name Sherm Woodman would make a flash animation of a Burger King employee singing Ding Fries Are Done. The image he used was taken from an Onion article, which also makes fun of disabled Burger King employees. Hmm. 
Small world. The earliest instance of it online I could find was a 2002 upload on Albino Black Sheep, and this appears to be where it started to gain popularity. The animation was embedded on many sites, but one of the most popular that hosted it was a blog titled American Angst. It's also often called the earliest site to host it, but even excluding the Albino Black Sheep page, I've found sites that date back earlier. The animation spread pretty quickly throughout all of the forums and content aggregates people loved back then, as well as E-Bombs world, and became a pretty beloved meme for its time. Although a byproduct of the song's obscure origins is that many people online wrongly attributed the song to Adam Sandler, and was colloquially known as the retarded Burger King song by a large part of the internet. Along with being shared, many people recreated the animation with different frequently seen mid-2000s characters, such as Britney Spears or Black Person. Now, that story's all well and good, but I know what you're really here for. If you knew anything about this story, it's that on April 9th, 2006, the adult animated comedy Family Guy would air its episode Deep Throats, in which one of the gags recreates the Flash animation and features a cover of the song by Peter Griffin. For the longest time, I just thought it was a neat joke that kind of got old quickly, but now that I know the origins of the meme, its inclusion in the show kind of baffled me. Family Guy is pretty well known for its reference humor. In fact, its excessive use of it is a major criticism of the show's newer seasons. Although this aspect of the series is used as a common complaint nowadays, it's obviously been happening basically since the beginning, and they've surprisingly also been no stranger to referencing then-current online fads. The first real meme to be put in Family Guy would be from the 2005 TV movie Stewie Griffin The Untold Story, where they cut away to a clip playing off the Wilford Brimley diabetes meme. There have since been plenty of memes referenced in the series, and even some have led to iconic moments from the show, like the troll song or peanut butter jelly time. But a note with all those examples is that even outside of the show, they were already massively popular with general internet users. So with that in mind, it's just kind of weird that the show would reference some niche albino black sheep joke, especially close to five years after the meme's inception, but it starts to make a little more sense once you learn what was going on internally in the show around that time. And now it's time for the Family Guy Production History Hour with YouTuber and famous Quagmire historian L.S. Mark. On September 23rd, 1999, Family Guy would air its second season, which would see a sharp drop in ratings, though this is natural for a second season of any show. On July 11th, 2001, however, the third season would premiere, and throughout this, the ratings declined would become much worse. This was exacerbated by both their initial time slots forcing them to compete with Fox's biggest shows at the time, and the network changing the show's scheduling off with little notification to the viewers. And so, due to these low numbers, Fox cancelled the show in May of 2002. After difficulty finding a channel willing to buy the rights to the show, it would eventually be bought by Cartoon Network for an allegedly very low price, and began airing his reruns on Adult Swim in April of 2003. This would turn out to have an amazing return on investment, as Family Guy began quickly building a cult following through these reruns. Adult Swim saw an over 200% increase in viewership, and the DVD release of the first two seasons released shortly afterwards would become the second highest selling television DVD set of all time. This sudden success obviously caught Fox's attention, and in May of 2004, the fourth season of Family Guy was put into production. This concludes the Family Guy production history hour. So despite Deep Throat's air date of 2006 being way past the meme's peak, the development of the episode would have began around the time it was seeing stable popularity, and the two-year break in between seasons would have been enough for someone on the team to discover the meme and suggest using it on the show. So logically, the events leading up to the decision make sense, but it's still jarring that this obscure in hindsight meme was one of the most famous jokes in one of the most famous TV shows. After the episode's airing, the original joke would be overshadowed by the show's reference to it considerably, and to this day, it's pretty much only associated with Family Guy. But even still, big things would happen both after and outside of Family Guy that are still of note. A new development in the tape's history would come in December of 2005, when the American Angst page was updated with a paragraph at the bottom stating that they had gotten in contact with the person they were reasonably sure was behind the tape. The details of getting in contact or verifying information is left vague, but what we did learn was that the guy behind Billy and the album is named Brent Calvin, though nothing is cleared up past that and any platform to learn more about him was intentionally left out. And jumping forward to 2020, the event that people aware of the joke both hoped and feared would happen 
finally happened. On December 3rd, 2020, the Burger King Twitter would finally break their silence on the issue by simply posting, Ding Fraser done. And a few days later, a new Burger King commercial would begin airing, with an orchestral and sanitized version of the song in the background. I work at Burger King, and it's This moment right here, better than any food Burger King has ever made. But it doesn't end there, as in a few of the threads under Burger King's tweet, a Twitter account claiming to be the wife of Brent Calvin began replying to certain people mentioning the song, and when asked questions, she provided a new image of the tape. This image doesn't give us new information, but it does confirm the album's creation year and give a name to the production company behind it. Prime Time Productions. Although, this appears to conflict with earlier sources which referenced the company Sessions Records. Sessions presents a very spastic Christmas. There is a Sessions Records and a Prime Time Records, but neither reference the album anywhere to my knowledge. And finally, in a different reply, the account would link a video from their personal Facebook page, both proving their identity and giving us the first real video of Brent Calvin. <laughs> You love it? There you go. Is that your claim to fame? Yeah, that's mine. I wrote that. I performed it originally. Everybody else has taken it. But it's my gift to humanity. So, there you have it. A comedy album made by a couple of dudes became an early 2000s meme, was a reference in one of the biggest shows of all time, and now has a long-standing, if hazy, legacy. The little information we have about the song still paints an amusing story, and to be honest, it was pretty fun to uncover all of this information. And it's still surprising just how little information we have about the album and the fact that the person who created it is pretty much absent from the public eye. But that's the whole story, and I hope you enjoyed me over-explaining too much about a dumb meme. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed the words that are coming out of my mouth, and be sure to subscribe if you like my mouth just that much. I'll see you all in the next video.